Okay, so I'd say, oh, actually, time for another two. So, like, first up, we have, oh no, okay, all right. <laughs> David, hey. hey, David's gonna talk about abstraction vertigo. So, do you just do this? Here's the goal slides, yeah. Okay, hello, oh. um, <laughs> yeah, I'm David, and uh, this is my talk. It has no JavaScript in it, so I apologize for that at the start. Um, I can apologize again at the end if you like. Um, I also apologize <laughs> for the poor uh, visual joke at the start of my slides. Warning appears again at the end. Um, so yeah, I like kind of thinking about things in an abstract way, but I also found that can be quite challenging. Um, often it's used as kind of a very positive thing. If we can be more abstract, that's better. Um, but also sometimes more abstraction leads to more headaches. Um, so just to start off with, let's figure out what we mean by abstract. Um, I didn't realize these would be transitions. Um, so I, as I was too lazy to make my own definition, looked one up on the internet. And thankfully, it matched pretty closely to what I thought of as, as being abstract, and very, very much so this relationship between an instance of something and the general idea of that thing. And um, that's really what I think of when I talk about abstract. A lot of people use the word generic as well. If something is more generic, then it's kind of it's not about the instance; it's about the, the general idea of that thing. Um, and also, of course, it can be quite difficult to understand. Um, and that's really the the concept I'm trying to get across here. Um, and especially as people talk about abstraction being a good thing, they want to become more abstract. Often, if we're putting it on an axis, obviously a vertical axis, to keep in line with my humor at the start of the, the talk then it would be going upward. So you might get vertical if you go too abstract. Um, so yeah, let's, let's start from the start. If we start at a low level of abstraction, um, we might think about kind of explaining the concept of numbers to someone. And we might initially say, give some examples of numbers, and then, well, what is seven? Um, and there are some really interesting definitions of numbers from a very abstract sense. But if you're just talking to a toddler saying, you say, well, here's what seven is. You'd, start by showing an example of seven things. You say, well, here's seven apples, and here's seven oranges, and do you see the aspect which is in common between these two instances of the number seven, if you like? So you kind of, you show a few instances, and then you kind of cover up the instances and say, well, what's in common? And then, well, that's what seven is. Um, and that's, that's okay, I think. Um, I, I don't get any headaches when I try to imagine what seven is anymore. Um, although I'm sure I did. Um, and then if you want to kind of go a bit higher from there, um, you can talk about, well, seven. All right, cool, I get seven. But the number seven, well, what is a number? Um, and then, you know, you can have some really quite interesting discussions if you want to imagine what is a number in, a, in an abstract sense. Um, and there, there are a few different answers to that. The JavaScript answer is particularly interesting and infuriating. <laughs> um, but, you know, as we had before, if you want to talk about what is a number, um, and you're, you're getting into kind of the dizziness or vertigo headache territory of abstraction, you can jump downward again and talk about some instances. You can think, well, what are some numbers I, I am familiar with? Well, there's seven. We, we got there. Um, there's, there's a couple other ones you can think of, and maybe once you look at what's, what they have in common, um, the headaches will subside a little bit. Um, and then if you keep <coughs> traveling upward, you can talk about types. Um, number is a type in JavaScript. See, there's a little bit of JavaScript. You know, it's not entirely devoid of that. Um, and again, if you like, number is a type. And you might see a very formal definition of what a type is. Maybe it has some category theory involved. Um, and what, when I experienced that, when I thought about, well, what is a type? I, I never really found the formal definitions very helpful. It was always by diving downward again and looking at instances that I kind of started to see, oh, these things have this in common. Oh, I think I have a rough, fuzzy idea of what a type is. And maybe once you've got the fuzzy idea, maybe then the formal definition is useful. Um, so yeah, that just a bit of rambling about abstractions and some things that I found useful. Um, here are my takeaways. Um, I meant to say at the start of the talk, another caveat, I have no idea what I'm doing. So um, if you have some really good ideas about this, I'd really love if you would share them with me. If you have some research papers you're familiar with, or just how brains work and stuff like that, or some articles or anything like that, or just this has sparked some ideas in your head, I'd love to have a conversation about that. That would be fantastic. Um, Here's a graph, which is totally real. This is all real data, as I was learning things in um, my life. Um, 
<laughs> Still working on monads. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, if you're looking for instances of monads, and this is my level of understanding of monads, is having a few examples I can think of, and then I say, oh, well, that's roughly what monads are. They're like a wrapper thing, but not like a burrito. Um, and that is my time. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.